What's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fork Guide. It's winter time. That means Alabama rigs. One of the best baits that's ever come about in the world of bass fishing. And today, I'm going to give you the top secret tip that nobody wants me to share. Boys, this ought to be a good one, and I can just about guarantee you, if you take these tips that I'm going to give you for the Alabama rig today, go put them into practice right now. It's going to lead to some new fish catches. You'll know why by the end of the video. Let's talk Alabama rig overall for a little bit. Man, <laughs> this bait right here, one of the most controversial, if you follow tournament bass fishing at all, you'll be well aware that they banned this bait. They banned it because it's so good that it's deemed to be unfair for the top level of tournament fishing. Luckily for us guys that just want to go out and catch them, hey, it's legal in the state of Texas. In most places, it's legal in some form. You need to check your state regulations. Some places only allow a certain amount of hooks. But the Alabama rig, I've seen baits come and go, seen new baits come to the market. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like the craze that went on with the Alabama rig. And boy, let me tell you, the first year that we knew about it, and we threw it out here on Lake Fork, uh, it was something to behold. It was something truly special and, and mind-blowing at times when we did that. And it's not like that anymore. These fish have seen plenty of Alabama rigs. You don't just go and throw an Alabama rig anywhere you think there might be a fish and catch everything that's there like you did that first year, like it seemed like you did that first year. That's not what happens anymore. You've got to be precise with it. It has its time and place, and it's not just the answer at all times like it seemed like it was there for a little while, which is what caused them to ban it at the top level of tournament fishing. But there's some things that you can do with the Alabama rig that I just don't believe that many people are doing. These are going to be some top secret tips, some of these that we're going to give out in this video today, so y'all be sure. Don't tell nobody. It's just between us, right? We're going to keep this on the low down. Generally speaking, when I throw an Alabama rig, I'm going to set it up like this right here. This is going to be a Smash Tech Alabama rig. That's my favorite Alabama rig. You guys saw a video we made recently with the man who makes these one at a time by hand from nothing but the best components. The construction on these Alabama rigs is second to none. They're very, very durable. This is the Alabama rig that we caught 200 pounds. Yes. 200 pounds of large mouth. This was the Alabama rig from that day all the way back in October. I still have that Alabama rig. This is why I use the Smash Tech Alabama rig, guys. It has been beat up this winter and starting back in the fall on that day with 200 pounds of large mouth in one day. Still the only ones to put 200 pounds of large mouth on camera in one day right here on your Lake Fort guy, myself and Heath Taylor. But this Alabama rig's been beat to heck and back and it's still here. It still looks right. It's still catching fish to this day that's why you smash tech alabama rigs the other thing that i like to rig them up with is eight ounce six cents divine jig heads with the three inch divine swim baits this is pro shed one of my very favorite colors to throw on an alabama rig one thing i love about the divine swim bait heads they have that screw lock on there guys i cannot express to you how important this screw lock is these swim baits i'll take one off so you can see there it's off right there y'all see that screw lock right there well, it's a little bit more meticulous to rig them up, but as you can see, you just twist these divine swim baits and the tail just kind of follows it around. It's really not that difficult to twist them right up on there, just as you see right there. But that right there, guys, this swim bait's been on here for weeks at this point. The only time I've changed swim baits if a fish bites the tail off. That's the only time I change swim baits. Look at that. That bait's going nowhere, guys. It saves you so much time because you're not re-rigging new baits every time you catch a fish, which happens on standard jig heads when they can rip the bait down easier, it rips the baits up a lot more. So that jig head's gonna save you a ton of time. And also those divine swim baits, just the construction of them. They're one of the more durable, small swim baits you're gonna find on the market. Uh, you can find those jig heads and swim baits at sixcentsfishing.com. Anything you go buy at sixcentsfishing.com, you already know if you watch my videos, be sure you go use the code your Lake Fort Guide. Save 10% on all orders. Let's give you the rest of the setup. 
<clears throat> this is going to be a six inch divine series seven eight heavy rod uh the other rod i like to throw it on is the eight foot lux series from six inch which is an eight foot heavy with a moderate tip both of these rods work well hey for an alabama rig guys two things i need in an alabama rig rod one is it's got to be a super strong rod lots and lots of power this rod is an absolute broomstick right here on the seven eight divine heavy the eight foot lux big rod as well got to have a heavy action got to have a big rod you're going to need that to throw this thing all day because it's got some weight on it the second thing i look for in a rod big handle throwing this is the number one deterrent for most people most people hate throwing this bait all day it wears them out get the right rod that is big enough strong enough heavy enough action get a huge handle like this divine series has right here guys that is going to make your life so much easier when you're throwing an Alabama rig, I do throw it on a loose Super Duty LFSG. That's a light frame loose reel that I use. Uh, the reason I do that is because the weight of the bait, sometimes the impact of the hook sets, and let's face it, reeling in up to three or four at a time. Yeah. We come back. Oh, that feels good. I might need some help. <laughs> I'm not. Either, either a big one or two or three? <laughs> you got at least two. I've got more than two, uh, and there's some big ones in there. At least three. <laughs> Golly! This is why. I think I may have just lost one. Uh, <laughs> Land that for me, Taylor. Land that for me, Taylor. <laughs> you don't really want to do that. <laughs> As you guys saw earlier on the 200-pound video earlier, or well, I should say last year. Now at this point. You're going to put a lot of torque and a lot of wear and tear on a reel that you're throwing an Alabama rig on. That Super Duty reel from Lou's, man, it's going to have those oversized gears, those oversized handles. It's going to make all that easy to, to deal with. And also those oversized gears are going to make this reel hold up to the beating that Alabama rig fishing can put on it. Also with that Super Duty, you've got a deep spool, man. This thing holds a ton and ton of line, which you also need at times for Alabama rig fishing. You're fishing long casts in deep water at times with an Alabama rig. One thing I love about this particular Lou Super Duty LFSG, it's a tiny profile. It's a little bit heavier than the other small profile reels, and you will notice that in your hand. But that is the give take for a reel that's tough enough to hold up to that kind of beating. But the size of this reel, it's just like all the other Lou's reels. Very comfortable in my hand. I'm not holding one of those big swim bait, big round reels that feels awkward in my hand. I'm holding a normal reel, a normal rod, and it just feels a lot more comfortable to me. Now the types of areas that I like to fish in Alabama rig in typically are going to be open water areas because look man, we got jig heads, jig heads, open hooks, all this timber behind me is a nightmare for those open hooks even when it lakes low like Lake Fork is and I can see it all, uh, it's kind of a nightmare to deal with those open jig head hooks in this timber. Road beds, pond dams that are bare, bridges, bridge pilings, bridge apron corners huge huge areas to throw alabama rigs in but nowadays with live sonar it opens up a lot more options for me with live sonar if it's a nice calm day like we're having now and i can keep that alabama rig on my live sonar most of the time i can literally steer that alabama rig above a tree above a brush pile then let it go back down um there may be some times when you guys may have seen me do that on this channel in the past with an Alabama rig. We did it some on Ivy the first day. Didn't get a lot of bites doing the Alabama rig deal. We were there a little too early for that when we went. But that being said, with live sonar, it changes the game for Alabama rig fishing. This is something brand new. You know, we've always wanted to have depth awareness and we've tried to fish for suspended fish. But now with live sonar, we have so much bait awareness of how deep that bait is and when it's approaching a standing piece of timber or when it's approaching a piece of brush or how far it is off the bottom you can make sure that those jig heads don't get hung up on those things by keeping that bait on your live sonar screen and manipulating that depth as you go lifting the rod tip speeding up the reel handle to get it higher slowing it down letting it drop to a fish all those things matter while we're on the live sonar subject let me discuss with you guys a little bit about some of the things that I've learned fishing in Alabama rig on live sonar. These are things that are effective for me. Doesn't mean it's the right way all the time. One thing that I've noticed that's huge with an Alabama rig that I did not know until I had live sonar. 
when I would fish an Alabama rig before, I would see what depth the fish were suspended at, and I'd want to get my Alabama rig too close, very close to that depth, as close as I could. I would try to count it down, understand the depth of my Alabama rig, how low it was swimming, all that. I will tell you this, the vast majority of the time when you're throwing an Alabama rig, your rig is much higher in the water column than you believe it is. And if you use live sonar, you will find this out. If you don't have live sonar, you need to be aware of this. This is important. Listen up. Your Alabama rig is typically swimming, for most people that I've seen in my experience, fishing with new guys every day, that Alabama rig is swimming much higher in the water column than you think it is. You need to slow it down more than you think. You need to let it get deeper than you think. You need to reel slower than you think. This creates... This creates so much drag in the water, it creates lift on the bait anytime you start reeling it. You may get it down to the depth you want to on the initial fall. You may wait long enough. As soon as you start reeling, people reel too fast and that bait climbs. You have to really creep this bait just to keep it at the level you started at. It lifts. It has a ton of drag and lift. I'm telling you guys, it's something you really got to be aware of and educate yourself on. The other thing that I've learned through fishing with live sonar is these fish actually like that Alabama rigs to stay higher. So even though to get the bait at the depth you want, you gotta be aware that it's probably gonna be higher than you think it is. Don't be scared to fish this bait four, five, eight, ten 10 feet above where the fish are. If the fish are in 20, don't be scared to roll this Alabama rig at 10 or 12 foot, especially in clear water. The clearer the water is, is it more clear or clearer? I think it's more clear. I'm a fishing guy, not an English major, folks. The more clear the water is, the higher above the fish, you can fish this Alabama rig and they will come eat it. I have noticed also on live sonar that when I see that fish and he's down here, my Alabama rig's coming. When I stop and I drop that Alabama rig, when I get it right next to that fish, they usually don't bite it. They will sometimes, but usually they don't bite it. But if I let that bait drift down to about five or six feet above and then hold it and keep it above him, a lot of times they will then come up and bite it. They bite it much better when I leave significant room between them and the Alabama rig. It almost feels like or seems like watching them on live sonar, the further they have to swim to come check it out, the more likely they are to commit to it and bite it. I don't know that that makes any sense, but that is what my eyeballs have seen on the live sonar screen. I have learned so much about Alabama rig fishing through throwing it on live sonar. So keep that in mind, guys. The clearer the water is, keep the bait even further above them. And you can really even pause it on live sonar. I do this at times, yes. I will throw that bait out there and I'll get that bait. Here's the fish, the bait will come down. I'll get it above that fish and I will stop my rod completely and hold it straight up and just shake it. And when you do that, the Alabama rig gets over them and hovers and just kind of vibrates and the blades get to flashing and the baits get to clanging around and it probably makes some rattling, jingling noise and it brings them to it. But I want to keep that bait above them as long as I can. I have literally had fish bite the Alabama rig with me just holding it dead still and it's just penduling them down and it stops penduling and just drifts right above them when it gets closer to the boat. And I've had fish come up and eat the Alabama, commit to it and choke it choke the bait on the Alabama rig when I'm just holding it still not turning the reel handle at all. It takes almost no water pressure whatsoever to turn these little willow blades. Same with these swim bait tails. They, they fly, you see how floppy they are. They flop around and move and look alive in very, very, very low water pressure situations. What that means is with any wind current at all, even as low as this wind is right now, if I was to throw that Alabama rig out there right now and just hold it, the tails are going to be moving some, the blades are going to be moving some. It's going to look alive to those fish as they swim up to check it out. Now those are some pretty top secret tips, especially the new ones with the live sonar. But this is what this video is really about. I want to talk to you guys about a completely different way to fish an Alabama rig and a way to fish an Alabama rig for fish that don't see an Alabama rig. But Billy, it's Lake Fork and those fish see everything. How are you going to present an Alabama rig to a fish that doesn't see an Alabama rig on one of the most pressured lakes in the country. Like we said earlier, throwing these things around timber, pain in the butt, man. You hung up all the time. Even when you can see the tops of the timber like you can now. Unless you do that right there. We rig our Alabama rig with weedless, lightly belly weighted swim bait hooks show you guys the hook we're using because this is a big deal this is a key component right here we're using an owner twist lock 3-aught 1 16th ounce 
Light hook, 1 16th ounce. That makes a huge difference on being able to throw your Alabama rig all day. It also helps keep that Alabama rig up in the water column above those fish like we just talked about. But that's the best hook I've found for using on these smaller swim baits. Remember, we're using three inch divine swim baits from Six Inch Fishing. We're gonna use an owner twist lot, three aught, 1 16th ounce hook. With this rig right here, and with the lake being low, guys, you can now take and go to stands of timber on main lake points, secondary points, uh, just main lake stretches that fish suspend them. And there is fish all over Lake Fork, Patrick Walters proved this, that suspend in main lake timber. I feel like there's a ton of them that do that because, because it's areas we don't fish. A lot of times the most nondescript areas without the points, without anything there, the featureless areas are where these fish go on Lake Fork because of the pressure that we put on them in the high percentage areas like points. So those fish that suspend in the timber on the main lake, they're not seeing much of anything. And with the water being low, you can really steer this bait between the lanes as you see right in front of us here. You can get this bait between the lanes in the timber. And now, if I wanted to, this whole stand of timber from me to that bridge, I can go through here and throw across it, steer my Alabama rig between the lanes of timber. And when I do make a mistake and there's a tree under the water or a branch under the water, or, what, or get too close to the edge of the tree trunk, whatever it is. When I bump it, I don't get hung up. I've got weedless Alabama rig baits. Um, the only time it'll get hung up is this might get wedged. And that's real easy if you don't just jerk on it and bury it in there. That's real easy to go over to that tree, get right above it, and lift that bait out of there. So I don't lose Alabama rigs. Fishing them weedless, especially when the timber's low and I can see the tops of all of them, phenomenal way to do it when the lake's full and you can't see the top of all this timber because when lake fork is full pull you can't see any of this timber right here behind me uh, but you still can see it with your hummingbird 360 with side scan with live sonar if you just have knowledge of the lake you know where the timber is uh, you can still fish that weedless alabama rig what i will tell you is you have to fish it pretty high in the water column or you'll end up being wedged in there a whole bunch uh, so it is a little more difficult to do when the lake's at full pull. But right now on Lake Fork, or any lake where you can see timber, rig those swim baits on a weedless swim bait hook, and you will be presenting an Alabama rig to fish that just don't see an Alabama rig, or on Lake Fork, a lot of anything for that matter. Uh, those fish are in areas, and you can cover the water. That's the big deal, because with these fish being in these nondescript areas and so much timber that we have in Lake Fork, you don't know where they're going to be. It's you got to cover a ton of water to find them, and this is the one rig that has the drawing power that it has and the bite getting ability that it has that you can actually go out and efficiently cover just big long stands of main lake timber. Uh, it's an absolute deadly way to catch them. Uh, it's something I've had in my back pocket for several years that I've used every chance I've gotten. Um, We've never shared it before. <laughs> it's been kind of one of those deals we kept to ourselves because it was so good. I mean, really, honestly, it was so good we kept it to ourselves. But in true Your Lake Fort Guide tradition, we're going to tell you all the details. And so we've decided that now is the time to expose this secret. We've proven it for several years now how effective it is. We've caught a ton of big fish doing it. Some of my biggest bags of every year seem to come on this technique with this Alabama rig. One last thing about this Alabama rig fishing, guys, especially with jig heads, you really don't have to set the hook real hard. Uh, these fish set it for you. And I will tell you this, I tell every one of my customers this, when you feel a bump, you keep reeling till you feel a load. You may feel a bump, 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 bump. Don't set the hook. Just keep reeling until you feel that fish pull on it. Now, when you feel him pull, go ahead and pull back. And you can pull as hard as you want to. You can snap it, you can set the hook, you can jerk on him, you're fine. Nine times out of ten, it seems like on these Alabama rigs, these fish dang near set the hook on their self. You'll be riddled along, and they'll come along and grab it and go in the other way, and you're just like, boom! I mean, they, they kind of, it's almost one of them deals where you're just reeling, and it hits, and it's like you're just trying to, you're right here, and it's like, oh, you're just trying to hold on to the rod, and they bow the rod up on themselves. But with these big rods, if you get one of these seven, eight heavy, eight foot heavy, one of these big rods, just pull on them, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on that fish. You're gonna get that hook in them, even on the weedless baits. One question you might have, Billy, do you have a hookup 
ratio issue. Do you find yourself missing or losing more fish when you rig the bait weedless? I do not. I do not. Think about it just like if you're fishing a single swim bait, a smaller swim bait over a grass flat. When that fish bites it, you hook him. Uh, you, you don't have any hookup ratios then. Those fish, when they eat that bait, they get it. That's why I say you wait for the load. That's the whole key there. If you swing on them when they bump it, yeah, you're going to miss them because they didn't get the bait. Same thing with the jig head. When they eat it and you get the load and they've got the whole bait in their mouth, when you pull on them with that big rod, you're going to get them most of the time. So I haven't found there to be any hookup ratio issues on the weedless baits. Man, like I said, guys, this has been just an unbelievable technique. Uh, I'm glad that I got to share it with you today. Bottom line is everything we do here, we're trying to help you catch more and bigger fish and love our fellow man. It's what we've always been about from day one. Um, I'm not perfect in upholding my end of the bargain on all of that all the time, but I try my very best and I hope that you understand that. I really do try my very best at all times to uh, do everything I can to help you guys and to love my fellow man. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for helping me build what we've built over the last five years now it's been over five years that we've been doing this and uh it's just been an unbelievable ride it's gone to places taking me to places and allowed me to do things i never would have dreamed of fish with people build relationships uh that i never would have dreamed i would have been able to do so uh, i can't thank y'all enough this is just an amazing experience i'm out here as the sun sets i'm at my favorite place on earth right now sitting right here on Lake Fork. Um, life is good. Life is really, really good. It's all because of each and every one of you that have watched the content for the last five years and continue to watch it. And so we're going to continue working just like we did today, try to bring you new tips, top secret guide stuff, and uh, help you guys every way we can. And thank you one more time for watching. We'll see you next time. You know where, right here on your Lake Fork Guide.